Today, I want to tell you the story of a discovery that I had when I was doing math research with a bunch of collaborators and how one particular website was extremely useful in helping with the discovery. And it's a website that you can actually use too when you're working on various math ideas. So the problem starts with this research interest that I had with two collaborators. And it led to the research article that I'm going to highlight right over here. This research article came about because of an interesting discovery that happened when we saw a particular sequence. And we were able to extract what that sequence is using the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. I think this is a fascinating website and I really recommend using it when you're doing your discoveries. So the idea is you can enter any type of sequence and it tells you what that sequence might be counting. So for example, in this sequence we had here, it counts the number of trees on n unlabeled vertices. It also counts the number of trees that are perfect on n nodes as shown right over here. And it gives you a list of all these different contributions from different mathematicians about what your particular sequence counts. Right, so for example, if we enter some classic sequences we might know, like the Fibonacci sequence, it'll actually recognize it as the Fibonacci sequence with the recursive formula. But it also gives all other interpretations noted by different mathematicians who are doing research themselves. Same thing if we enter the powers of two, we get the powers of two and a bunch of different ways to interpret them. You can see this entire list right over here. For example, a sub n plus one is the smallest number that is not the sum of any number of distinct earlier terms, right? So this gives us ideas of problems that we can actually come up with dealing with these sequences. For example, this note notes that two to the n is the sum of the rows of Pascal triangle. So we have an identity relating binomial coefficients and two to the n. Okay, today's focus in my discovery with my collaborators was published in the Australasian Journal of Mathematics. And the interesting part about it is that these polynomials arise in the variable Q, and the thing we didn't quite understand was the coefficients of these polynomials. And in this paper, we were able to actually figure out exactly what those coefficients were by finding a generating series that told us the rth polynomial in the variable q by expanding the series on the right. Now the point here is you don't need to know about the actual series that's on the right. The question is how we were able to actually come up with these mysterious polynomials that we didn't understand in the first place. Here are some examples of what these things look like. They get quite big. Um, so here's an example of one of the small ones. And if you plug in q equals 1, you get the number 3. The next one, which is a degree 5 polynomial, when you plug in 1, you get 11. And by plugging in 1 to the various polynomials we have, we get these numbers that form a sequence. 3, 11, 40, 145, 525, and it's something that I entered earlier. So when we were doing the research and finding these numbers, we actually plugged this in and we found that this number counted the number of multiplex juggling sequences of length n. No idea what that even is, with what they say is base state 1, 1 and hand capacity 2. But it did give us a generating function for those coefficients. So if we looked at the actual numbers that we had, we're able to write down an explicit formula using that generating function. And that led us to being able to understand what the polynomials were themselves. Now this stuff, the multiplex juggling sequences, has nothing to do with the research we were doing. So somehow there's some relationship between the stuff that we were doing, which had to do with Lie algebras, and these juggling sequences of a certain type. So we thought in order to understand the combinatorics of what's going on with our stuff, we should go ahead and look at the paper that talks about these multiplex juggling sequences. And we did. We took a look at the details to see if there was like a natural correspondence between the stuff that we did and the stuff that they did. So we investigated, looked at all the different things that were going on, and it was mathematics, so it was very different than the stuff that we were working on. But it ended up being very fun to play with. The idea is you have balls that descend down from a chain and fall off, and you're counting certain phenomenon with them. Okay, so we went to the bottom and we had 
these tables, and we saw our particular sequence right over there, and the corresponding generating function. And we noticed some of these other sequences actually related to other polynomials that we were trying to find as well. So it's really cool that through the online encyclopedia of integer sequences, we're able to really get an understanding of what was going on with our particular counting thing and how it relates to something completely different. So if you want to use the online encyclopedia yourself, I actually highly suggest it, and there's a page that gives you hints and help on how to use it most effectively. So what you can do is type in any sequence that you're curious about and want to know information about. This particular website will give you information about maybe recursive formulas, explicit formulas, and as they say right over here, when you're trying to solve a problem but it seems too hard, write your sequence down with the first several cases, and you'll be able to get some interpretations. And like we saw, even with classic sequences that you might be curious about, you'll get a whole huge number of things. So for example, with this sequence right over here, if we type it in, we get what's called the Motskin numbers, which is the number of ways of drawing any number of non-intersecting chords joining points on a circle. Apparently that's counted by this interesting sequence. But this sequence has a lot of other interpretations as noted by all of these mathematicians. And it could be that with the sequence you're working with, there's an interpretation that matches the type of thing that you're trying to discover. So I find this website just absolutely fascinating. So some hints if you're gonna use it. Um, enter about six terms and leave the first term off. Start with the second term. The reason is there aren't necessarily agreed upon first terms in many sequences. Like the Fibonacci sequence, some people think it starts with one and then a one, but some people like to start with a zero instead. If you leave off the first term, you'll match more with things that um, you'll be able to see in the database. Clean up your sequences. If you have a bunch of zeros in between every other term, get rid of those zeros. If your sequence has a clear common factor, like in this example, all the uh, particular terms have a two as a factor, factor that out and write what's left. The encyclopedia will see the results much more easily. Fascinating, so a really cool website. I definitely encourage you to try it, especially if you're doing undergrad research, working on problems even in homework to get an idea of what's going on, or if you're working on problems in general that might be coming from various sources, if you have a sequence pop out, discover, play around with this website and see what kind of things it might be counting. You never know what secrets lie ahead.